All right, everyone, thanks for listening. We're Group 20, and our project is on machine learning for characterizing climate-related disasters. So natural disasters impact both life and property. Globally, direct losses are valued at about $165 billion per year. Indirect losses can increase that by around 50% or so. And with climate change and human development, we're expecting this figure to get higher and higher as time goes on, making disasters uh, quite a bit more costly. So big data and machine learning have been used for forecasting, preparing and responding to natural disasters, and they've been particularly good at looking at these sort of climate forecasts. Uh, but there's quite a bit more work to be done in predicting impacts. Uh, they're quite complex. And so our goal then would be to train multiple machine learning models to predict the impact of climate related disasters on society. So we have two data sets that we're going to use. The first is MDAT. It's a global database of natural and technological disasters. There's about 21,000 entries, 40 plus characteristics or features, and it spans in the year 1900 to the present. There's a lot of information here, but one thing that we thought of initially was that uh, there's a lot of non-stationarity in this. As I said, um, disasters are getting more expensive with time. And one way we can correct for that is to also include world population as an extra feature, and that comes from the World Bank. On the computing side, we're just going to use uh, our basic Python packages like NumPy and Pandas, and then we'll also use some machine learning specific ones like Scikit-learn and MLextend. And we're going to run this all on our personal laptops because the data set is uh, fairly usable. So as a more graphical approach, I could show the modeling process. We'll take some example features like geographic location, uh, disaster type, disaster magnitude, the number of people affected, and we'll plug it into a prediction model like decision trees or k-nearest neighbor. And from there, we'll make an impact prediction, which would be financial losses or death toll. We're going to evaluate this two ways. One is with mean squared error, uh, and the second is coefficient of determination, which is the proportion of variance in the dependent variable that's predictable from the independent variables. And that ranges from negative infinity, which means super bad, to one, which is uh, perfect. And so you want a positive value. That means you're getting more information out of it than just sort of random data. Um, you'll notice that the, the formulas are kind of similar, uh, and that's because really the fundamental thing we're looking at is some sort of deviation from the true value in our predictions. So we had to do quite a bit of data pre-processing before we uh, started on the machine learning side because there's uh, quite a bit of mess in the MDAT data set. So the first thing we did was eliminate features with less than 1,000 entries. We're starting with about 14,000 entries. Uh, so anything that has you know, 13,000 of them that are null, we get rid of. Uh, the next thing we do is numericize Boolean entries. So no and yes becomes zero and one. Uh, and then next we choose a target predict and which would be total damages, death toll, or number injured. Next, we eliminate any rows remaining with null data. And then after that, we binarize nominal or non-ordinal categorical variables with one hot encoder. What I mean by that is for some things, you know, for example, uh, a wind speed of uh, 50 miles per hour is less than a wind speed of 100, 100 miles per hour. But for something like a disaster subgroup, floods, droughts, and hurricanes, we can convert these into numbers, maybe one, two, or three, but that would imply for some of these algorithms that uh, floods are less than droughts if a flood is a one and a drought is a two. So we binarize that by making uh, extra features. And so each uh, entry can be you know, one or zero for flood, one or zero for drought, one or zero for hurricanes, et cetera. Finally, once we've done all of that, we separate our data into testing and training sets using a test size of 30%. So the first algorithm we want to look at is decision tree regressors for total damages. We use a regressor rather than a classifier because our total damages are a continuous variable. And so we're going to use scikit-learn here. There's a decision tree regressor. The first thing we want to do is just a basic tree. What we found that's highly overfit. The training data is 1.0 for R squared, which means it perfectly fits the data. But the test value was negative 0.03, which means it's highly overfit. So we need some dimensionality reduction on those many features we have, and also some parameter optimization. So we went through, tried some principal component analysis and some parameter optimization with parameter grid, played around with the number of components, the max depth of the tree, and the criterion for the tree, meaning mean absolute error or mean squared error. We did some cross-validation, found that the best R squared was still quite low at 0.03. Did it again, tried variance threshold with uh, dropping any feature with a variance less than 0.1, uh, and then a sequential feature selector, selector with a parameter grid looking at different numbers of features. Again, cross-validated. Our best R squared was still 0.03, so pretty bad. Finally, we tried a really simple tree uh, using only the variance threshold. Uh, fit the train val training value pretty well, but it actually uh, fit the test value not too bad too, at 0.43. That's not a great score, um, but when we look at it sort of graphically, we can see on the left that the residuals tend to line up near zero, so we're getting somewhat close to the true value. Uh, on the right, you can see a sort of YY plot of actual and predicted damages. And while you can see there's quite a bit of variance, there still tends to be the sort of lining up along the diagonal, meaning that we have actually picked out some of the data, even though it's a bit difficult to actually predict.
So the next algorithm we elected to try was the k-nearest neighbors algorithm for classifying the adjusted damage. However, before we could really start processing and using this model to our advantage, we elected to do some basic visualization to understand some of the features and the characteristics of these features. So for example, on the bottom left, we see disaster type, and then the counts of disaster type are mainly held with disaster type 2 and 3. Next, we looked at the frequency of the countries that experienced disaster, and this was a way different picture than the disaster types. In fact, it is more spread out and less dense in areas than the type of disaster. However, before we could really start using the k nearest neighbors algorithm, we had to create bins for our continuous variable adjusted damages, so that is now a categorical variable used for classification. We found it best suited to use a range of I5s so that it was well suited to address any boundary issues and so that there are not any extraordinary observations that decrease our prediction capability and accuracy. As you can see from the histogram, this seems to be a very top-heavy classification in which most of the observations have a high price associated to the damage that was caused. On the bottom left, you can see just how we created the bins. So 1,000 to 1 million, 1 million to 5 million, so on and so forth, all the way to over 100 billion in damage. All right, everyone, thanks for listening. We're Group 20, and our project is on machine learning for characterizing climate-related disasters. So natural disasters impact both life and property. Globally, direct losses are valued at about $165 billion per year. Indirect losses can increase that by around 50% or so. And with climate change and human development, we're expecting this figure to get higher and higher as time goes on, making disasters uh, quite a bit more costly. So big data. So now that we have our bins created, we can now use the K nearest neighbors algorithm for the bins. Using the scikit-learn package from Python and importing the K neighbors classifier algorithm, we are able to generate these models on our data set. So for this part, we decided to split it into two sections. First included all of the features. For this data set, after pre-processing and after including only the most important features that we thought, we are left with only 15 features. So that is what model one consisted of. It had a total of 15 features. Running this from one neighbor all the way to 100, we saw that with a K of 97, so 97 neighbors, the accuracy was at its peak of 24.67, and the MSE was at its lowest of 5.8202. Although these numbers are not great, you should have seen the other trials, they were atrocious. However, this indication that 97 neighbors was the most appropriate when including all the features, we were able to create segregated models with an increasing order of only using two features. So for example, feature one and feature two were a separate model, then feature two and feature three were a separate model, all the way up till we got to feature 14 and 15. Now, this process sounds really redundant and boring, but it did in fact improve our model prediction and also lowered the MSE. This could be because we improved the model with a lower dimensionality. So bring in the drum rolls, ladies and gentlemen. Here is our most accurate K nearest neighbors model. As you can see, we have feature J on the X and feature M on the Y axis. These correspond to, if you're looking at the green box, is that feature J is the region, so the region in which the natural disaster occurred, and then feature M is the continent in which the natural disaster occurred. Um, logically speaking, this sounds like it would be the most sound um, features to include in a model, especially if with prediction accuracies. So, you know, if we were to just you know roughly guess, hey, you know, you live in South America, and you tend to live in more of a wet region then possibly there are hurricanes going around. Um, as mentioned before on the previous slide, we do have a K neighbors of 97, as we saw that that was the most primed neighbor from including all the features. And then we could see that the accuracy improved from 24% to 26.15%, and then the MSC reduced from 5.8 to 5.529. So this was an overall improvement. So then another model I'd like to bring to your attention is this model that had country and region as its two feature variables. Um, country is the J feature, so that's the one on the X, and then region is the, one on, is the M feature, so that's the one on the Y axis. Although it did not fare as well as the previous model in prediction accuracy, it did far better in a lowering MSE. It went from a 5.5 to a 5.4, so a slight improvement, but however, I just wanted to include this because it is interesting that if we look at the features comparing this one and the previous one, they're both geographically based. So this could prove that for predicting climate disaster damage cost, that really the most important things are where you're geographically located. And this, you know, once again, sounds redundant, but it also is a nice check with reality because how do we normally assess 
natural disaster likeliness, and that is usually where you're geographically located. Like, for example, Iowa, they're more prone to tornadoes and things of that nature. So this is just a nice check with reality. The final model we tried for this project so far is an artificial neural network model. Um, neural networks are, in general, very useful for um, modeling and predicting on very complex data sets with many, many features. Um, they're considered to be, quote unquote, black box models, uh, which means that it is difficult to interpret um, what the weights mean. Um, they were developed um, based on actual biological brain signal signaling mechanisms. And the, the general concept is um, training a set of weights to predict output based on input by optimizing a cost function. And the motivation um, for including this model in our project was to compare the sleep learning model to the more tr traditional machine learning models, such as the decision tree and the k neighbor algorithm, uh, and, and really see how they compare on training for our relatively small data set. The data processing step for the neural network was very, very similar to the previous models. Two additional features were added. One additional variable was duration in years, which was calculated based on the given starting and ending dates of the disaster. In addition, the total affected and the world population variables were normalized in order to ensure that they were on a consistent scale to the other variables and that they weren't overly favored by the model. The output variable um, was the same as for the k-nearest neighbor, though just the damages variable was bent categorically into 12 categories. The image on the right gives an overview of our artificial neural network model. There were 59 input features, um, and in the first hidden layer, there were 64 units. In the second hidden layer, there were 32 units, and in the output layer consisted of 12 categories. We used the PyTorch package, and specifically its object-oriented API, to code this model. Um, the sigmoid activation function has been used so far, and the stochastic gradient descent optimizer was used. 50 epochs, which means 50 um, iterations of training were conducted with this model. So speaking of additional tuning, here are some specific improvements that we plan to make um, for the artificial neural network model. First of all, we would like to try different hidden layer configurations. Instead of just two, we would like to try one and three hidden layers as well, along with different numbers of um, nodes per layer. We will also try different activation functions um, and optimizers. Uh, optimizers, uh, we would like to try Atom, and for activation functions, we especially like to implement the softmax activation for the outputs due to their uh, mutually exclusive categorical nature. We may also attempt regularization techniques, such as dropout, if we deem that overfitting is a problem, which so far it is not a problem. And we also may consider training simpler artificial neural network models using the important features that were determined from decision trees and k nearest neighbors as detailed previously. So in conclusion, the decision tree model tends to overfit or has very low performance. Conducting dimensionality resolution techniques improved results, but not very much. The k nearest neighbors algorithms conducted on multiple sets of features uh, performed adequately, especially for lower number of features. However, improvements could still be, lead to stronger results. The artificial neural network performed relatively poorly compared to the other two models, but there are a plethora of additional improvements that can be made in both feature engineering and model hyperparameter tuning. Thus, we deem that this artificial neural network model has the potential for future much more accurate predictions, which we hope to include in our final report. Uh, overall, the Relatively poor performance of these models indicates that predicting disaster impacts uh, is a highly co complex and multifaceted problem. There are many different types of disasters um, that each have their unique circumstances um, and that lead to um, different levels of severity. Thus, a more targeted approach, maybe focusing on a certain disaster or a certain region of the world, may be preferable for impact prediction. And that is it for our presentation. Thank you for listening.